Hello and welcome. My name's Stephen Dickens and you're joining us here at Futurum Live from the show floor at Share in New Orleans. I'm joined by Jeannie Glass from Virtual Sea. Yes, thank you, Stephen. Welcome to the show. Well, you know, we've been wanting to work with you for a very long time. And as a startup, we're building bit by bit. And it's just a huge honor to finally be here working with you. Oh, so you're thank you kind. for having us you're here. You're too kind. So let's get our listeners and viewers orientated. Tell us a little bit about what you do. And then we'll go into explaining Virtual Z. Yeah. So Virtual Z is an early stage uh, startup company. Um, we're innovating in the area of mainframe data access, uh, creating the first out of the box solution. Uh, so you don't need to code uh, to get at your mainframe data or to share your mainframe data anymore. Uh, with our technologies, you can sell our, our products out of the box and be up and running. Fantastic. So what do you do for the organization? Yeah, so I'm founder and CEO. Um, I had the idea for the company several years ago and reached out to some colleagues that I worked with uh, during my tenure at Computer Associates and uh, shared my idea for the company. And we all uh, came together. And here we are now with uh, multiple products uh, coming to market. We have uh, relationships with most SIs embedding our technology into their customer projects. We're in the Azure Marketplace today. Uh, we'll be in the AWS Marketplace, uh, Google Marketplace, and maybe Salesforce.com Marketplace very soon. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So let's double click on a couple of the products. Mm -hmm. Lozen and Zach are, mm -hmm. the, are the two major pieces of the portfolio. Mm -hmm. Let's just get some of the uh, listeners and viewers orientated. Tell me sure. a little bit about Lozen. Sure. Uh, so Lozen is uh, our first product. It's to market uh, today. And Lozen allows applications that are not on the mainframe. They could be anywhere else. They're in the cloud. They're a SaaS application like salesforce.com. They're a custom cloud application that was written uh, from scratch, uh, a distributed application. Any application in the environment that's not on the mainframe has real-time read-write access uh, to data on the mainframe out of the box full transformation, leverage mainframe security, uh, you know, very performant. Um, and so really it's just a innovation uh, that I think brings the mainframe uh, to the same level of other uh, platforms that have been around for years. It just, you know, elevates the mainframe to this uh, real-time read-write access to data that they haven't had before. And I've been tracking you guys for a few years mm -hmm. now, exciting technology. What's been that customer traction that you've had over mm -hmm. the last maybe 12 months or so? We yeah. speak on a pretty regular basis. You give me an update, but yeah. really just maybe for the listeners and viewers, what traction are you getting in the marketplace? Yeah, so most of our traction has been with the SI starting to embed our solution into their customer mm -hmm. project with some uh, direct end users uh, starting to come in uh, as well. And then, of course, through the marketplaces, partnering with the cloud providers as well. So good traction. It's always fascinating for me yeah. to see a new startup in the mainframe space. Yeah. So many established companies have been here for so long, yeah. but it's fascinating to watch yeah. a new startup. It's been a long road, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. um, the main I understand that maybe the last mainframe vendor to come uh, into the space was in around 2012. So we're a bit of an anomaly uh, as a startup mm -hmm. mainframe software provider. Uh, you know, we're also the first women founded mainframe. As a girl dad times four, that's important yeah, to me. Yeah, I mean, and that wasn't, none of those things were aspirational. Those were things that I learned uh, as we got going. Mm. And so it's something I'm really proud of for the company and all of us. So uh, we're getting there, but it's slow. Yeah. It's slow. So tell me a little bit about Zach. That's the newest kind yeah. of member of the family. So yeah. tell me about Zach and how that's kind of getting traction. Yeah, so Lozen has a lot of use cases for customers where you know any cloud application or distributed application needs access to mainframe data. But we think Zach is really an imperative for all mainframe customers. Uh, it has a much broader uh, use case because there's so many applications on the mainframe that need access to data in the cloud or data in storage or data on distributed uh, platforms. And Zach really makes the cloud look and act exactly like mainframe storage. Mm -hmm. um, so there's just a, uh, any number of use cases uh, for that. It could be for uh, DevOps. Um, you know, it could be for spinning up low cost storage uh, for dev test, as opposed to having to spin up mainframe storage. You can spin up low cost storage for test dev. And so Lozen has a lot of use cases. You could use Lozen to feed a data model uh, for AI, 
You could use Lozen for reporting and business analytics to feed into Tableau and other products. You could use Lozen for a number of use cases, but Zach is really, we think we're going to apply to every mainframe customer. And I th it's interesting, we see about what data moving from on-prem to the cloud. We're talking a lot about seeing storage, particularly yeah. people using cloud object storage. Tell me a little bit more about kind of, you mentioned there with Lozen and Zach, mm -hmm. some of those use cases for moving data. Mm -hmm. What are you seeing? What As you talk to customers, I know you speak mm -hmm. to a lot of people mm -hmm. in this space. What are you seeing around that data mm -hmm. movement? So our premise is stop moving the data. Mm -hmm. Don't move the data at all. Leave the data on the mainframe, if that's its home, and access it in real time from any other platform. Mm -hmm. We're saying if your data belongs in the cloud for that particular application or use, leave it there and let your mainframe applications access it in real time. So we're saying stop moving your data. Yeah. We're saying leave your data where it is, get your applications where you want them to be, it's best for your business wherever they are, have your data wherever it's best for your business, and Lozen and Zach will allow you to access that data wherever it's wherever its home is securely and safely access that data. So removing that overhead for the ingress and egress fees, That's moving right. data from place to right. place, right. keeping it where it naturally resides, but right. opening up that access. And with full data transformation. So Jeannie, we talked about moving data to and from the cloud. Mm -hmm. There's obviously a cost overhead there. Mm -hmm. Organizations are thinking through that. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing? What are the experiences from people looking at solutions like Zach and Lowe's? Yeah, so uh, first of all, as you know, there's a significant talent gap uh, in this uh, IT space and all other solutions other than our solutions require coding. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna have, you're gonna buy software and you're gonna have a team of developers writing code to move data. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of that work consumes a large percentage of your mainframe capacity. We hear customers tell us regularly, it's not an anomaly, regularly that they're consuming up to 40% of their mainframe capacity uh, lifting and shifting data. Um, with Lozen, Lozen is zip enabled. So any work that is done is done on a zip engine if it's available. And you're not hitting the MLC That's bill. Right. You're not consuming any of that. That's right. Makes sense. And Lozen is installed out of the box in a couple of hours. You might maintain your security um, protocols on your existing mainframe security and you're up and running. So you free your programmers up to work on your business. Uh, you free your mainframe up to support your business and you stop moving data and you just leave the data where it is and access it out of the box securely and safely right where it is. I think that zip enable piece is key for mm -hmm. me. I, I mean, I can see that people would naturally gravitate towards that, not consuming your kind of regular ZOS MIPS, yes. whether that's tailor fit pricing that's or right. MLC, moving that onto the zip. So that's yeah. foundational. Oftentimes customers catch that after the fact when they get their bill is when they catch the additional MIPS consumption yeah. because customers are uh, deploying more and more applications to the cloud and they'll find out after the fact yeah, that they've- comes back and hits right. them in that that's MLC right. bill the next that's month. Right. So if customers and people are watching this video, what are the three things they should be taking away? Virtual yeah. Z still relatively new to this space, although mm -hmm. we've been chatting for a couple of yeah. years at least. Yeah. What are those three key takeaways that people should be thinking about? Um, I think that the possibility of accessing this mainframe data in real time is going to take time for customers to understand and embrace. We mm -hmm. talk about leave the data where it is, access it securely and safely right where it is and stop moving your data. And even though we say that a few times to customers, they'll say, well, then what do you, how do you replicate the data? And we have to say, no, no, no we, didn't we don't replicate it. the data. Again, the data just stays right where it is. So I think what they should be thinking about is that there's a truly a new possibility that they haven't had before um, because customers out the gate will want to try to put us in an existing bucket. And this is a true innovation in mainframe computing that hasn't been available before. And so just you know, being open to the idea that what you're used to in the cloud and distributed is now available on the mainframe out of the box is gonna take time uh, to absorb. Well, I think that's a fantastic way for us to wrap. Thank you so okay. much for being on the show. Thank you, Stephen, it was fun.
You've been watching another episode of Futurum Live from the show floor. Please click and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next episode.